Hi, I'm Mike Saxenian. Welcome to my vlog series, TEDx Talks. Each episode, I'll be speaking with one of our expert teachers or administrators about how we use the abilities model to enable our students to thrive here at McLean School. So relax while we tell you about transformative education at McLean. Hi, today we're going to take a deep dive into McLean's Middle School, and I'll be speaking with David Roth, our Head of Middle School, and Jenny Wichard, the Assistant Head of Middle School. So David, uh, tell me, what is it that, that excites you about working with middle schoolers? I, I love the energy they have. I love uh, they come in each day and they're excited to be at school. I'm a very energetic guy myself, and often I get matched and sometimes trumped a little bit by their energy. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that draws me to the middle school is how much change students go through during those, those four years. Yeah. I think that there are a lot of challenges in middle school. I think there are sort of three major ones that I think of. The first one is you've got kids who go from lower school, which is the parents are really sort of coaching them, and most of their lives are being set up and managed by their parents. And then by the end of middle school, hopefully, they're in a place where the parents are just consulting and the kids are more independent. And so you're asking them in four years to go from more or less being not real self-sufficient to being sort of managing their whole lives, or a lot of many parts of their lives, and that's a huge challenge for them. The other big challenge for them are just the physical and mental and emotional changes going into adolescence, that the body changes in that during those four years, that makes things complicated. And then the last one I think for, from a challenge standpoint is you've got kids who for the first time ever I think are more self-aware and they're starting to realize, okay, this is an area of strength for me and this is an area that I may not be as good at. And they're starting to see a path of what the future might look like. And so all of that are sort of, those are big concepts for a, you know 11 or 12 year old to handle. And so you, you have these challenges, but the cool part for me, what I enjoy is seeing what those four years look like and going through what could be a hard time and a really difficult situation to be becoming this really positive, uh, self-sufficient, ready to move into high school person. How is it that we support students to, to develop in a positive way through the middle school years? I think we do a lot with social emotional support. I think in some ways you could argue that's more important for their growth than the academics in middle school. This year we hired a social emotional coordinator who spends her you know, full day working on ways to, to support the kids. A lot of it's our core values. We, we have this pride program, which you know is, is great for us. Um, it's really our code of conduct. We're asking kids to be positive. We're asking them to be respectful and responsible. We're asking them to be safe with their decisions and making good decisions and be empathetic. And so when we have that as sort of the cultural norm, what we find is that a lot of the challenges they may face are made easier because the, sort of the moral and ethical compass is set in a certain direction that is very positive for them. And so we, I think we have an environment that invites kids to be themselves, but because it's safe, it allows them to, to sort of do what they want to do and be who they want to be. So some families find their way to us because they have a, a child who's got some specific uh, need for a little more support in an area. But often then we find that we are getting siblings of those kids because the family sees, and often the sibling sees, what a wonderful supportive environment this is and, and how good the academics are because we're not dumbing down anything. Are there any examples like that that come to mind for you in the middle school? Yeah, there was a student that graduated a couple of years ago who started kindergarten, was here for all 13 years. And he was a student who I think, you know, was, was a good student, but never really was quite sure where his path would lead. But every subsequent year that he was at McLean, it seemed he was growing more and more confident. By his senior year, I mean, I remember him as I was middle school head and coming in. He was the president of the Student Government Association, so he was always up front. He'd come down and talk to middle school kids about why, you know, why McLean is so great and what he's done here. He ended up playing varsity basketball, not really ever being a basketball player before, but he worked hard and he had the opportunity in a small school to do that. He ended up, I think, in his in his uh, spring of his senior year, joining the musical. He was never on stage before, but wanted to put that out there and try an area that have challenged for him to get that experience. Um, and now he's, uh, we just saw him last year, he came in for a conference that we offered and he was one of the speakers and he's now at uh, Boston College in their honors program, he's doing great. And so he's a student that really took all that McLean could offer, maximized the opportunities here and I think he's doing really well outside of school. So it's been nice to see you know, students in this environment who maybe were a little quiet and introverted turn into these really amazing people three or four years later because the system and the structures we have in McLean allow them to do that. I think the abilities model is something that, you know, it really captures a lot of what we try to do here at McLean. You know, we have kids who come in who have these great strengths in different areas, whether it's art or music or they're athletes or they're, you know, amazing in the classroom. And I think we've really focused on how do we get that strength to be uh, focused upon and make them aware of that. You know, a lot of schools have student learning profiles that include accommodations and strategies, which we have too, but ours also includes a whole area of strengths. And so as a teacher, if I pick up an accommodation list or a student learning profile and I see, oh, they're really verbal, I know that I can start a debate and call on that person. Or they're really, really good at note-taking. Oh, that's the person that's going to we'll organize the material from our class discussion. So that's really nice. Terrific. Yeah. 
So Jenny, what do you like about working with middle schoolers? I find middle school to be one of the most interesting times in a child's development. You never know what you're going to get from one day to the next, but it, it's also an honor to watch them grow and develop from these young kids who still need a lot of support into kids who are very ready to be independent learners. What, how do you see us supporting them emotionally, first of all? I think the way that we view it in our middle school is that the social emotional um, support is really the foundation that we build upon even for academics. If they're using uh, good decision making that we ask them to do in our pride code of conduct, um, if they're thinking about others, if they're having positive interactions with others that may be advocating to a teacher that they need um, support or help or that may be um, being a good community member and lending a hand to someone um, who needs some help or support. If they feel good about themselves and their self-confidence is strong, then they're going to persevere, they're going to push through those hard academic times that often they will struggle and, and face in middle school. So it's, it's, it's definitely a 360 view of our students. That's terrific. And with that strong social emotional foundation and that supportive community, what are the uh, goals? Where do we try to get them to academically by the time they're ready to move on to high school? It's a great question. So with that, I think one of the most important things that we can provide our students with is a sense of solid executive functioning. So are you aware of your strengths as a learner and the areas that you need help in? And can you then be resourceful enough to find compensatory strategies to help you achieve the academics that you would like? If you're aware of yourself as a learner, you can get the resources that you need to be successful. The abilities model, I believe, wholeheartedly looks at how can we build on the things that children do well? How can we build on the successes that they already have and apply that to the areas that they need some support? So what are the best practices? What works best for that child? And then apply that in areas that they need that support. Having a really supportive community works so well for students that just might have a little bit of anxiety when they arrive and it allows them to relax and feel comfortable here. Academics doesn't define who you are. It's just part of who you are. And it's really important in life, especially in middle school, that we give them lots of opportunities for them to figure out what their likes and dislikes are. We may have students who don't excel very well in math, but are fantastic on the lacrosse field. Or we, we actually may have the anxious child who is worried about um, writing in English, but can get up and perform in one of our musicals. Um, so I think it, it gives the kids and the students an opportunity for self-discovery. Thanks for joining us for another HeadX Talk. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time.